Hey, uh, my name is Claire Jantz, and I'm a professor of geography at Shippensburg University. I'm also the director of the Center for Land Use and Sustainability at Shippensburg University. Um, this is one of two webinars that go along with the report I completed reviewing land cover data products for the Delaware River Basin. Webinars um, and the report are available at drbproject.org slash documents. Um, the, the other webinar focuses on comparing um, the NLCD 2011 edition to the NLCD 2016 edition and some suggestions for how to make the migration. This one focuses on comparing the 30 meter national land cover data um, and the one meter land cover data um, for the Delaware River Basin. So just to give a snapshot overview of what um, these data products look like. On the left is um, the national land cover data. This is a 30 meter data product um, that probably you data are familiar with. Um, that means each cell represents 900 square meters on the land on the landscape. That's about a quarter of an acre. Um, I've estimated that in the Delaware River Basin, there's about 40.6 million um, individual pixels in the Delaware River Basin. And on the right side is um, the high resolution data set that was put out by the University of Vermont Spatial Analysis Lab. Um, this is at a one by one meter resolution, so much higher resolution, 900 times finer than the uh, national land cover data. That means instead of uh, 40 million cells, there's over 36 billion cells in the Delaware River Basin. And while you can see how these data products represent the landscape in different ways, um, they also present some, uh, some challenges, even when we're thinking about things like file size. So for example, for Berks County, Pennsylvania, the national land cover data product occupies uh, just a little over a megabyte of disk space, whereas the one meter data product for the same area represents about 350 megabytes of disk space. So we're looking at um, a few dozen megabytes for a basin wide product for the Delaware River, or I'm sorry, for the national land cover data versus um, probably 10 to 15 gigabytes for um, uh, looking at the whole basin at the one meter scale. Um, so obviously you can see a lot more of the details of the landscape using the one meter data uh, than you can in the, the 30 meter data. But these products also have some other differences in how they map out the land cover. Um, the classes on the left are what we're accustomed to with the national land cover product. Um, kind of four developed uh, classes, three forest classes, a couple of um, classes for agriculture and wetlands. The one meter land cover um, data has some similarities to national land cover, but there are, first of all, again, it kind of parses out the urban environment into roads, um, and structures and other impervious surfaces. It also, because it incorporates LIDAR in the mapping process, can separate tree canopy that's over impervious surfaces like roads or structures versus um, more uh, intact tree canopy. Another key difference is um, instead of separating out things like lawns and different types of agricultural classes, the one meter data product has a single class called low vegetation, which can include, um, you know, anything from a golf course to uh, a pasture. So one of the first things I did in looking at these two data products was to just look at how each data set um, estimates the quantities of land cover for a sample of counties within the Delaware River Basin. So first to start that, um, I had to come up with a common classification scheme because the, um, the classes are different in each data product in order to compare apples to apples, I had to 
find a way to make them comparable. So um, some classes were easy, for example, water, barren, shrub scrub, those are um, uh, common classes that just sort of merge into a, a common class. But something like development from NLCD, you can see I took the four developed classes and merged them into a single developed class. Whereas from the high resolution data, I took anything um, that could be considered uh, part of the built environment and collapse that into a developed class. So this is the, the classification scheme that I came up with to compare them. And again, um, the first step in comparison was just looking at how they estimate the footprint of each land cover type. So this is for Monroe County. Um, this is a largely forested county. Um, getting up into the, the more northern part of the basin. And you can see that um, the NLCD area or proportion cover estimates are in blue. The high res data is in orange. And um, what we notice is that the high res data picks up a little bit more forest, a little bit more in the low vegetation class, but NLCD um, maps a larger footprint for development. And that's actually a pattern that we see across all three of the counties I compared. So this is Monroe. I also took a look at Berks County in the middle part of the basin, um, which is a mix of forest and ag land. So here, a lot of the ag land is captured in the low vegetation class. Again, the high res data picks up a little bit more low veg, a little bit more forest, while the NLCD maps a larger developed footprint. Finally, in a more urban county, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, um, you can really see the differences um, in this landscape because uh, primarily because of the, the developed footprint. NLCD maps this county as being over 50% developed, whereas um, the high res data only maps it at a little over 20% developed. And again, we see those same trends with a higher proportion of forest and low vegetation being mapped in the high res data. And this kind of makes sense um, when we come back and look at this comparison of a relatively urban landscape. The high res data um, maps out the urban features at a much finer scale. So you can see individual houses, individual roads. Um, you can see the lawns and forests, backyards, whereas the national land cover data just kind of groups all of that um, Herb, all of those urban patterns together into developed open space, low intensity, and medium in, in intensity. So obviously there's a much larger footprint um, coming out in the developed category in the NLCD. Now, another thing I did was to look specifically at the low vegetation class and the one meter data to see what land covers are being captured within that um, pretty broad class. So to do this, I intersected the national land cover data and the high res um, low vegetation class, just to see again sort of what was coming up. And what we see in these pie charts for Montgomery, Berks, and Monroe County are the NLCD land classes that correspond with that low vegetation category. And you can see that across all counties that every single NLCD class is represented in that low vegetation class, but the proportion differs based on what the dominant landscape is within the county. So for example, Montgomery County, which is the most urban county, we're seeing a lot of developed open space, low intensity and medium and intensity development, whereas Berks County, which is a mix of um, of built of, of sorry of forest and ag, we get a lot of agriculture, cultivated crops and pasture hay showing up. Monroe County, predominantly forested, we come up with about a third forested and another third in developed open space and low intensity development, and then another third in um, agriculture and cultivated crops. So. Um, from a water quality or water quantity modeling perspective, using the high resolution data um, means that we'd probably have to do some sort of um, processing to be able to estimate the types of land covers that are represented in that category. Because 
the runoff and pollutant loads coming from a developed class compared to pasture, compared to um, cultivated crops are gonna be different. So, um, so, so these analyses were focused on the footprint and the type of categorical land covers that we see in these two data products. Because the national land cover data also includes a, a map or a set of maps that estimates the percent impervious surface for each cell, we can also estimate um, or do a comparison of how much impervious surface is picked up by national land cover, which here is represented on the left, and um, the one meter land cover class. So um, to do this comparison, I area in each county um, that was comprised of some kind of built surface or structure from the one meter data. Those are highlighted here in the red boxes. And then from the 30 meter data, I, I uh, estimated the amount of impervious surface when he, within each 30 meter cell and then summed that up for each county. What's interesting here is that even though when we look at the overall footprint of the developed land classes in NLCD, and, and um, in the graphs I showed before, we had higher estimates from NLCD. When we look at the amount of impervious surface, um, the high resolution data set actually picks up more impervious surface area. In some cases, like in Monroe County, it's more than double um, what is picked up by the national land cover data product. And this I think is largely driven by the fact that the high resolution data is able to capture much finer scale features. And especially in areas where there's a lot of tree cover because it incorporates LIDAR information, it's able to tease out um, roads and structures and other impervious surfaces that are underneath tree canopy. Whereas with the national land cover data, it's really just would just pick up the tree canopy. So again, from a, a modeling perspective, um, these are differences that should be highlighted when we're thinking about runoff or water quality. So um, if we shift our focus over to the Chesapeake Bay watershed, um, they have very similar challenges that we have in the Delaware River Basin in terms of how to use national land cover data or high resolution data in um, modeling and capturing uh, information about land use and land cover. Um, what the approach that they took to kind of merge the high resolution and the low resolution data was to create um, a database of at the 10 meter resolution where um, there's actually oops, sorry, 13 different data layers in this database. Um, each data layer represents a different land use or land cover class. Each data layer is at 10 meter resolution and each one estimates the percent cover within a 10 by 10 meter pixel of that land use or land cover. So instead of having a single categorical land use map or a land cover map like an LCD categorical map or the one meter data, they have 13 different data layers that represent um, this kind of percent cover approach. So to compare it with LCD on the left with the one meter data on the right, in the middle is the 10 meter Chesapeake Bay data set uh, showing just a subset four of those data layers that are available. The impervious layers, um, a forest layer, grass layer. Again, you can see um, higher resolution. It's teasing apart some of the, um, the urban information that's, that's not really apparent in the national land cover data. Um, but this is a, a smaller data set in terms of disk space, and it's also um, compatible with the Chesapeake Bay watershed model. So just to sort of show some, some more views of this data set, um, 
Upper left is showing impervious categories with mixed open. Upper right is showing the turf grass. Um, lower left is showing the forest and tree canopy layers. And then the lower right is showing the water and wetlands layers. It also breaks apart pasture um, on the left and cropland on the right uh, from each other. So kind of similar to how NLCD um, uh, deals with, with those two agricultural classes. Again, this data set was developed specifically as input into the Chesapeake Bay um, watershed model. So they were focusing on land use and land cover classes that um, have significant impacts on uh, water quality or quantity in terms of their um, nutrient loading characteristics. So, so that's the approach taken in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And I just wanted to bring that in because there have been discussions in the Delaware about whether or not um, there should be a similar product developed for the Delaware River Basin that tries to maximize the resolution of the one meter data, but that brings in more categorical information about land use and land cover um, from NLCD. So to sum up key findings and recommendations, um, when we look at the NLCD uh, data with the UVM SAL data, we definitely see some differences in scale. We see differences in the area of different land use and land cover classes that are estimated. We also see differences in how they estimate impervious surface area. Um, and there's definitely some strengths and weaknesses um, associated with both. Um, the one meter data is probably most useful for um, local scale conservation planning. And by that, I mean sort of county level, watershed level, cluster level. Um, but because of the, the disk size occupied by these data sets, it's very difficult to work with a basin wide product with sort of typical um, computer resources. Um, but with this data, you can really see things like where there's riparian buffers and where there's not, you can see um, where there might be opportunities to develop um, urban tree canopy um, and those, those types of applications. And finally, looking at the 10 meter data for the Chesapeake Bay watershed shows us an example of what a hybrid product could look like, but I think um, it's important that if we want to develop a similar hybrid product for the Delaware River Basin, we should probably take a look at what users um, might want to, uh, what their needs are so that the product that we develop would be compatible with those uses. Again, the um, 10 meter data set for the Chesapeake Bay was developed with a very specific application in mind, um, and that might not be compatible with what the user needs are in the Delaware River Basin. So that's the end of this webinar. You can take, check out the other webinar or the report at, um, at the website shown here.